Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What are you doing hiding there? Well, folks, we're uh, back into this morning uh, broad broadcast of uh, Gospels, daily Gospel commentaries that we do here in the Kleachko household. Um, let, let, let me just uh, let me just remind you of why why we do this, how we do this. This is something we do, we've been doing for years, where I um, read the Gospel of the Day, the Mass for the Day, and I do a little commentary to help my own children understand the meaning of the Gospel of the Day. And then we thought, you know, why don't we share this with, with friends on Facebook who might, um, one way or another, benefit from these commentaries and that's the reason why we do this and maybe and hopefully to encourage parents also to uh, help their own children understand the Catholic faith and understand the gospel by doing this very simple catechesis of um, you know explaining the meaning of the gospel to their own children this is really simple I mean we do this at breakfast time we end breakfast at seven o'clock and we take a few minutes of the day before we head out to go to Mass to read the Gospel of the Day and explain a little bit about what it might mean for their own lives. So I'd encourage parents um, to do the same. To do the same. And it's, it's, really, it's really not that difficult. A little studying of the Catechism, a little um, 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 discernment of the Gospels on a daily basis would go a very long way in helping your children understand the faith and live it. Okay, so today it's February the 3rd, 2020. We took uh, about two months of a break uh, during Christmas season and we normally do that just because life is a lot busier during that season. So now we're into a new semester We've uh, settled in more or less as far as uh, classes of the kids are concerned and the homeschooling and our schedules are a little bit more normal. So now we're back in the saddle and we're going to resume our uh, daily broadcasts. So today the gospel comes from St. Mark. Today, by the way, is the Feast of St. Blaise. So there's an optional memorial and there's a different gospel in case... Uh, that's the gospel you might hear uh, at Mass, but I chose to just do the regular gospel for today. It's from St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. It's a very long gospel, so I'm not going to read the whole thing in the interest of time. But this is the gospel that has to do with that uh, man possessed by legion. Possessed by legion, okay? meaning many devils, not only one. But many and nobody could control him anymore uh, even if they put fetters on him and chains he would break away see that was how strong this man had become he he was so possessed by the devil that he was really overcome by the strength of the devil and nobody no man could contain him no man could put him in his place and so one day our Lord was walking uh, uh, by the territory of Gerasenes and uh, he got out of the boat and at once a man from the tombs who had a certain unclean spirit met him so this guy the man had been dwelling among the tombs and no one could restrain him any longer even with a chain and so he goes and approaches Jesus and says what have you to do with me Jesus son of the most high god look at what's important in this statement even the devils know who jesus was right they recognized jesus and why do they recognize him why does the devil recognize jesus well because if you recall during the temptation uh, um, in the desert before jesus began his public life the devil was not quite sure right he was trying to test and see if this Jesus was really the Son of God. Of course, he confirmed that he was. So, all along the time of Jesus' public life, now the devil knows who he's dealing with. Right? And so, 
he speaks the devil speaks to this man by saying well what have you to do with me now Jesus son of the most high God I adjure you by God do not torment me could you imagine the irony of this the devil himself uh, 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 invoking God right not to torment him so of course using this man as the 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 uh, his his agent his avenue to try to stop God from even uh, dealing with the devil and he asked him what is your name and he replied legion is my name meaning many because there were many devils in that one man and long story short Jesus commands all of legion to get out of that man and he put them into the swine right and the swine herd drowned in the sea okay what lessons can we learn from this gospel today number one our sins our defects our shortcomings our troubles in life no matter how many no matter how big no matter how difficult even if they were legion are no match to the power of God with one command God tells legion to get out of that man okay so one very important lesson we need to learn no matter how many difficulties in life we have no matter how many sins no matter how sinful and how grave our sins have been they're no match to the power and grace of God St. Paul himself complained to Jesus right? when, when St. Paul was experiencing plenty of temptations and one day he complains to Jesus and said you know I got this thorn in my flesh I couldn't get rid of it and Jesus answers and says to him, My grace is sufficient for you. Hey, fellow, what are you complaining about? You know, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, our Lord was assuring St. Paul that no matter how great your troubles are, no matter how many sins you have, no matter how thorny, you know, how, how pestering that, Temptation that doesn't leave you. My grace is sufficient for you. You got to rely on the grace of God. You got to submit yourself to God's mercy, to God's authority, to God's power. And that requires humility. That requires a lot of humility to recognize that God is more powerful than our weaknesses, than the greatest of our weaknesses. Okay? And all he's asking of us is cooperate. All he's asking of us is be humble. Submit yourself. Submit yourself to God's power, to God's authority, to God's mercy. Recognize the mercy of God. Recognize the love of God. And allow God to work a miracle in our souls. But, but, we're not going around like mm, a lot of folks think they could and just say oh you know God is merciful God's going to understand my weaknesses God's gonna forgive my sins ah, and, uh, and, and I don't need to do anything about it uh -uh. wrong wrong God who created us uh, according to I think it's St. Thomas who said this I'm paraphrasing God who created you without you cannot save you without you remember that eh? God who created you without you cannot save you without you meaning meaning you need to cooperate with the saving power of God eh? we need to cooperate meaning we need to put our effort we need to do our part and what part what is the part here that God is asking of us how can he work in our souls to help us overcome our, our challenges, our sins, our difficulties? What's the first thing we need to do? Huh? What? I can understand, Joe. Go to him how? To? To, to pray? To, 
Huh? What are we saying, Sophia? To obey. To obey. To obey, of course. To obey what? <laughs> to obey what? Concretely, how can we cooperate with God? Obey. Huh? Okay. First thing is to go to confession. Right? If we are not in the state of grace, if we, if we are, even if we are in the state of grace, but we are, we, we have temptations, we have venial sins, the first thing we need to do is to go to confession. So that is why we should love confession. That's why we should frequent confession. Because that is the main door to the mercies of God. Right? That's the door. If we want to cooperate with God's mercies and to avail of His grace, the first step is to make a good confession. And better yet, if we go to confession frequently. Right? In our case, we do it once a week. So... Confession, confession, confession. And of course, as you were saying, pray. Okay, pray. You have to pray. But there's a third, there's a third component to that. And you remember that even when you go to confession, what do you say in the act of contrition? Eh? Huh? To amend my life. Right? There is a purpose of amendment that is included in your contrition. And that amendment means you will put the effort to do better okay you will put the effort to do better to amend your life to change your ways in other words that is the expression of god who created you without you cannot save you without you you need to do something you need to change your ways you need to do better okay and that way we will change we will be uh, a better man a better boy a better girl a better woman with the help of God. Okay? So no matter how great our sins are, remember that they're no match to the mercies and the grace of God. But we have to be humble to submit ourselves to God's authority. Okay. That's it for us, folks. We're off to Mass. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good week ahead of you. And hopefully we keep this up. You're welcome to join us every morning. And, you know, I post this all on Facebook. So, um, you know, even if you don't catch us at 7 o'clock in the morning here in California, uh, then you can listen to it all throughout the day, I suppose, uh, on my page on Facebook. And I, I post this on two other pages on Facebook. One is Gospel by Dad, and the other one is Catholic Best Practices. So you can like either pages, and you're going to have this videos there every day okay have a good day bye, bye. 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 bye.